In 2021, uh, the department uh, took on a, an initiative to, to train what we call the coordinated response protocol. Uh, and it originated in SOU where uh, we tried to take some of the uh, components that, that SOU and SWAT use, such as teamwork, communication, and, and making sure we have the resources needed to handle a call and try to impart that onto patrol. Um, the coordinated response protocol, in short, basically encourages officers to, to assess the details of the call. If there's no exigency, meaning that there's no one, it's not an active shooter, there's no one currently in an ongoing state of danger, um, the officers are encouraged to ensure that they slow down, <clears throat> they wait for their cover. Not only do they wait for their cover, but they communicate, they talk to their cover officer, uh, and come up with a plan, even if that plan is, I'll do the talking while you manage lethal cover, right? Um, something as basic as that. Uh, we found a lot of officers would <clears throat> show up to a call together. They wouldn't communicate anything. They would simply walk up together. One officer would start talking. The other officer would start talking. Um, if a an issue presented itself where force was needed, both officers were trying to either go to less lethal or lethal uh, and so we we encourage them to say, hey, if force is needed, like you do lethal, I'll do less lethal, uh, and kind of come up with some sort of plan ahead of time. <clears throat> we, we found that most of the time, the calls, there's something violent happens, there's a poli the police are called, there's a lull in the violence, and the violence doesn't start up again until the police officers arrive. So most of the time, there is time to slow down, wait for your cover, and to have a brief conversation about what needs to happen. Have a conversation about, hey, the details say he's in there with a gun, we should have a shield. You know, They should call uh, for a shield if they don't have one. Um, if they need to call for a less lethal option like a launcher or a less lethal beanbag shotgun, um, you know, we encourage the officers to really slow down, assess and plan and, and ultimately coordinate, right? As the, uh, the training implies, to coordinate the response and go in together. Um, after we initiated that training, we, we trained um, all of patrol. In the next 12 months, we saw a significant decrease in the number of our officer-involved shootings. Uh, we also saw a significant decrease in the number of rounds fired um, during those, those shootings by virtue of reducing officer involved shootings and reducing the rounds in those shootings, uh, we think we've had a positive impact on officer safety and public safety. Uh, along with the coordinated response protocol training, uh, the department implemented a disengagement training uh, where ultimately in, in years past when I was an officer, uh, disengaging was, was unheard of. Uh, the idea that we would respond to a scene, assess, and then ultimately decide to leave uh, was something that never even crossed our minds. But what we've come to realize is a lot of times um, we, our presence as law enforcement officers is uh, perpetuating the incident, is increasing the tension, is um, increasing the likelihood of a deadly force encounter just by virtue of us being there. And so <clears throat> the training basically um, whenever involves that if there's not a threat to public safety, um, there's not a criminal act going on, or the criminal act is so minor that it doesn't need to be addressed right then and there. Uh, officers are encouraged to assess, and then if it's in the best interest of public safety, to, to disengage, to leave. Uh, and then we can come back when the individual is sober. Uh, we can come back when we have more resources. We can come back during the day. Um, and or we can come back with covert resources. Like there's all sorts of options. Um, to where we can maybe handle it better and reduce the likelihood of a deadly force encounter. And so those were two uh, significant training issues that SAPD took on uh, in the last 12, 18 months. Something that we're actually starting this year, uh, we're transitioning from 40 caliber uh, round to a nine millimeter round. Um, we had done research in 2021, um, which showed that the nine millimeter rounds helped improve 
officer accuracy, uh, the reduction in recoil, the ability to get back on target um, was something that that helped um, improve accuracy overall. And so we, we've been uh, a 40 caliber department for as long as I've been on the department, which is so more than 20 years. And so us transitioning to nine millimeter is a significant um, event for us. The handguns that we're issuing come ready for a uh, red dot sight. The holsters, we're, we're issuing a weapon mounted light uh, with, every, with every handgun uh, that the officers don't need to purchase. And we're also providing them a holster capable of, of holding the, the weapon with the light and the, the red dot sight. So now the only purchase uh, that would be on the officer is to purchase uh, a red dot sight that's approved. And so um, by reducing the, the cost of outfitting the handguns with the red dot sight, um, again, if anyone's familiar with the, the research on the red dot sights, the accuracy um, improves significantly with uh, a red dot sight. So our, our vision is that by transitioning to a nine millimeter and increasing the amount of red dot sights on the guns um, that our accuracy should also improve, which in turn obviously improves officer safety. Uh, we purchased a, a large number of shields, which are smaller, more portable, and they are now deployed in the field so that if needed, they will be able to hopefully be on site already, uh, but if not, they'd be very close. Uh, we also increased the number of less than lethal uh, options that officers had. Uh, we noticed after tasers came on board years ago, uh, the use of the less lethal shotgun beanbag round um, diminished. And so in an effort to, to counteract that, we uh, transitioned a lot of our inventory to less lethal shotguns. Uh, and we also purchased 40, 40 millimeter launchers um, for patrol, which the 40 millimeter launcher has a a uh, much wider range of use. And generally um, we've seen it has a, a better impact as well. And so we've increased uh, those tools on patrol. And then we're constantly updating our drone program. Um, so if officers find themselves in a situation um, where a drone can be useful, we can deploy a drone, uh, send it ahead of the officers, have it, you know, let's say if we're looking for a suspect in a field, uh, our helicopter, uh, we have several helicopters, but um, they, if they're tied up on something or if it takes them a while to arrive, we've got an increased number of drones now in the field, uh, which can be deployed uh, more readily and with significantly less cost than the helicopter.